As horrible as Donald Trump is and all the things he does, I have never been more angry than I was when I saw the Women's Forum with MAGA women in the audience. Harris Faulkner from Fox News was the interviewer. And he discussing Amber Thurman's death because she laid in a hospital with sepsis for 20 hours because they could not help her get a DNC and she died. She left a six-year-old child behind who does not have a mother and she is not the only person and he is craven and the people that watch him are craven. Kylie, play the clip. Amber Thurman's family have come out on a press call and they're doing what's called a pre buttle to our town hall right now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And I'm, I want to get... get better ratings, I promise. How dare you? How fucking dare you? Women are dying and you're worried about your fucking ratings, you fat clown. I am so mad. And here, and I'm thinking, those women, those MAGA women thought that was funny. Women dying is not funny. It is deplorable. It is craven. It is unconscionable that you would make a joke about people dying. Women are dying. Women are losing their right to bear children in the future because they're becoming sterilized because doctors wait too long. Doctors are being prosecuted and thrown in prison because they're providing care to women. Just in Texas, since the abortion ban that Texas put in place, 64,000 women have had to have their rapist babies. And he is making a joke and he is fucking laughing about it. Go fuck yourself. It is not funny. And if you can't see that it's not funny and it's not about you in the ratings, go fuck yourself. That is, I was so mad that I just, I could hardly sleep last night. I was just like, how is he saying this shit and getting away with it? And why are those women that support him laughing? It's this, it's this internalized misogyny. And these women are married to men that you gaslight them, that they have very dysfunctional relationships with. These people have very dysfunctional relationships with their religion. This is the party of dysfunction. These are the people that when you get in a relationship with, you go to psychotherapy and to sit down with your therapist to figure out why am I surrounded by these people? And I think in this election, you have all of the broken people on one side, that like cruelty, that like uh, controlling, like to be controlled. They like all of the bad things in the world. And then on the other side, you have people that are fighting the good fight, the fight that has been fought long before when you get to slavery, Jim Crow, gay rights, and on and on. And I want to be on that side of history. Mm -hmm. I want to be on the side that when things were sent back to the states, Jim Crow laws, and there was segregation, I want to sit with Rosa Parks. I don't want to be the piece of shit white person that spits in black people's faces and refers to black people as the N-word, as they do, white people still do to this day in white circles. That is who these people are. That is who they are. And you can see all the clips from back in the 60s, we can read the stories back before camera, and we see where everybody is now. And I'm going to be on the fight for fighting for justice, for democracy, for marginalized people 12 times out of 10. And all those fucked up women that sit around the most fucked up man that has ever been president of the United States and probably hopefully will ever be, hopefully this weekend, turn the page. But I really don't want anything to do with those people. No, I mean, it's gross. And here's the thing. Those are all people that would say, we're pro-life. Really? You're laughing about people dying. Are you pro-birth because you want to control women? Or are you pro-life because you don't give a fuck that women are dying? What they want, there's a deeper psychological thing going on here. These women know that their husbands are men and they have wondering eyes. Their husbands probably watch porn, which who cares? Who cares? Their husbands have probably, they've all grown up in a world where, a Puritan world where sex is shamed. 
You have to feel ashamed to have sex. And so these women are jealous of the object of their husband's affection when they watch porn, when they play grab ass with their secretary and all this stuff. So there's a desire on their part to be punitive to women as well. Whereas if we would get away from all of this Puritan culture and embrace that it's perfectly normal to have a sexual appetite, but there are things called consent, respect, humanity. But when you when you teach this abstinence only Puritan culture shit, it doesn't help in the long haul. And you have all of these covert issues like women hating other women because their husbands or their boyfriends want to fuck other women, which I've always said to my husband, just because you're on a diet doesn't mean you can't read the menu. An attractive person walks by, I'm going to look as well. That's human nature. But in their world, they've been taught thinking about sex is bad. Lusting after another woman is bad. So these women jump on it too, because they know, they know where their husband's minds are going, but they've all been taught that it's this horrible thing. So then it's, let's be punitive. Look at all the Abrahamic religions and how punitive they are towards women and how all of the onus on any sort of sexual desire is always placed on the woman by both men and women. So it's a deeper psychological thing too going on there, I think. It, it would have to be because that's just flat ass craven. But and then in this same interview, he actually says, OK, I just want to preface this. I don't think Donald Trump knows what IVF stands for. <laughs> I don't think he knows what it entails. Right. I don't think he knows a fucking thing about it, because if you recall at the debate, he just kept saying fertilization because he doesn't have a clue how it all works. So this is what he said about IVF in this women's forum. And IVF, you had mentioned before IVF. Let's get this question because I believe that's what this is about. Oh, I want to talk about IVF. (laughs) I'm the father father of IVF. I'm the father of IVF, so I want to hear this question. Are you fucking kidding me? He didn't even know what it was until he goes on to explain. He didn't know what it was, obviously, until Katie Britt, remember her, the Alabama Stepford wife? I mean, it is... It is so appalling that he sits in a room with women, he's questioned by a woman, and he gets away with shit like that when his party that he's the leader of will not codify a law protecting IVF. They voted it down twice in the last six months, Republicans have, on a national level. So shut your fucking mouth. Keep IVF out of your gross, nasty mouth. I can't stand this man. These women in this room, I just, I'm profoundly offended by them. They're part of these, like the sheep we always talk about. Like he's a nut. Everybody knows he's a nut. The people that support him, that's the real problem. What's going on with them? But so I just, I was madder than a hornet. I just had to get that off my chest. I'm just furious. It's it's appalling. And, you know, we talk a lot about, there's a lot of talk right now about, the bro vote Mm -hmm. and how Trump has been out doing podcasts to get the bro vote. But I mean, it's, there's a huge problem with women that um, are indoctrinated into misogyny. And I mean, I have as a career woman by other women been shamed multiple times and um, received a lot of underhanded insults because I work. And there's been a lot of criticism about that. And this projection that I have to be a stay-at-home mother um, has always been put on me by other women in the community. And I would argue that my sons are a million times better off seeing a woman not have to ask anybody for anything, being beholden to no one, attending everything that I possibly can, sitting down and having honest conversations with them about what the real real world is like. And sometimes I can't be at this or I can't be at that, but that's reality. Nobody's childhood is idyllic where mommy shows up with cupcakes 24-7, 365. That's not reality. That's not going to prepare you for adulthood because nothing is like that. And so I don't know. I think all these people want to live in the 1950s. Mm. I do not. I do not want to live in the 1950s. I do not want to be dependent upon anybody for my uh, 
finances. It's a it's a disgusting political movement that's rooted into in a lot of archaic bullshit from religion that women are supposed to submit to their husbands, that nobody can have a crush on anybody, that nobody can find anybody else attractive. So you know what? All their husbands probably do watch the most. It's I, I doubt it's just, you know, normal porn. Right. That was This causes them to get into the kinkiest shit imaginable. Well, listen, I'm not a kink shamer. I don't care. But these women have probably seen the Google search history and they're madder than a hornet. And so they want to be punitive to the object of their husband's desire, which is women. And that, to me, is at the heart. That and Christianity are at the heart of internalized misogyny. Because living in the Bible Belt, I have heard so many women throughout the course of my time here say, oh, let me check with my husband. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, I have to submit to my husband. <laughs> my husband is the leader of the household. Right. I've heard it. And I'm just like, wow. What the fuck is wrong with you? Is yeah. what I think. Yeah. All right. Stick with us. It's so entertaining to have the vein. So